Hello everyone, let's find the area of the region bounded by the two curves and one of them is y equals x squared and the other curve is y equals 4x minus x squared. And as you can see here, they're both quadratic. So we are actually having two parabolas that's bounding a region. And we are interested in finding the area of this region. So how do we do that? First thing, we need to draw the region. But before that, we actually need to come up with um, a good way of drawing the region. And one thing that we can do is to find the intersections between the two curves so that that will actually um, make drawing the region a lot easier. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to first start finding the intersections. Okay, so how do we find the intersections? We are going to set the two y equal to each other. That means we are setting the two functions equal to each other. We are setting the x squared equal to 4x minus x squared. And then we try to solve that equation to find the intersections. Okay, so we have x squared is equal to 4x minus x squared. And then usually what we can do is to move everything to one side because that's a nonlinear equation. So we want to make one side of the equation zero so that we can find um, the zero for the function. Okay, so what do we have here? We can, uh, we can add the x squared to that side and then we can subtract the 4x, right? So we are going to be getting um, 2x squared if you are adding the x squared to both sides and then you're also subtracting the 4x. So you get 2x squared minus 4x is equal to zero. And then if you just look at this equation here, we can actually factor out the 2x as the greatest common factor. So we are getting x minus two is equal to zero. Okay, so from this equation, because it's already completely factored, right? So we can come up with the solution to this equation. The solutions would be one of them comes from the two x, which will give us um, x equals zero. The other one is what x equals two, right? It, you have two minus two, you're going to get zero. So that will satisfy the equation. So we have those two um, solutions. And then that's not enough. We actually need to find the points of intersection, right? So how do we find the points? We need a y, uh, the corresponding y value for each of those x values. So we are going to plug um, the x values into one of the functions right here. It doesn't matter which one, usually we just choose the easy one to plug in. So I'm just going to plug um, those values back into the easy one, which is this one here. So you plug the zero in here, you're going to be getting y equals zero. And then the other one is when we have, um, when we plug in the two, two square, we are going to be getting y equals four. Okay, so we are actually getting the two points of intersections. One of them is zero, zero. The other one is going to be what? Two comma four. So we have the two points of intersections. Okay, so right now we need to start graphing. We need to start graphing the two curves. And then when we are graphing the two curves, we actually need to um, set up an XY plane first. And so what do we need here? We are going to set up the XY plane by doing this. I think this would be enough. Okay. So now we have the Y axis here, and then we also have the X axis. And we are going to label the scale for the X axis as, um, let me see, so we can go um, negative one in the negative x direction. And then we are going to get one and then two and then three, four and five. Okay, so the five is a little bit off. So we get the five right here. And then what about the y axis here? We are going to be getting, um, and if we just look at the points of intersection, we can see that uh, in the y direction, we will go as high as the four for the intersection, but then we usually need to go a little bit higher just to see the big picture, right? So instead of just stopping at four, we probably will want to go up to maybe six, right? So let me just reach all the y so that, yeah, so that looks better. 
Okay, so now what do we do? First, we plot the intersections points. So we are going to be getting um, the two intersection points. One of them is zero, zero. So we get the origin right here. Okay. And the other one is the two, four. So two, four is here. One, two, and then one, two, three, four. So we are getting that right here. Okay, now those are the two intersection points, but that's not really going to help us figure out how to draw the two curves, right? Um, but we know the curve for this one because this is the most basic parabola function that we have, right? So we know that its vertex is at the origin and then and then so we know that the right here and then it also has points, right? One, one, and then negative one, one, and then also two, four. And so when you when you graph this one, then you are going to just graph it. And it opens up, right? So we are going to get this point here. And then so the parabola, it's going to look like this. I'm going to highlight this function right here so that you know that I'm using that color. And so we are going to be getting, yeah, so we get this parabola right here, and then we go in this direction. Then you may say, you may ask, why do we just, why don't we need to get um, this portion of the graph? Why don't we, why do we just stop at negative one? How do we know that we get to stop? You can see that based on the two points of intersection, the main focus is actually in the first quadrant. It's not really, um, we don't have much in the second quadrant that we need to worry about here. And so that's why I'm not graphing too much in the second quadrant. Okay, so now, um, we need to graph this one. This one is not so obvious anymore. So now the question is, how do you graph this one? Um, for this one, we can actually try to do something like this. We know that for y equals um, negative x squared, I'm actually just switching the two terms. So it should be negative x squared plus 4x. And so for this one, we can find the vertex first. And once we find the vertex and we have... Um, we have at least two points right here, right? Unless one of the points is the vertex, um, that would be enough for us to graph the problem, okay? Because we can take advantage of the symmetry. So what we are gonna do here is that we are going to um, find a vertex. How do we find the vertex? It would actually be easy. We can use the formula, which is x equals negative b over two a, right? What is the B value here? The B value is actually the four. The A is actually the negative one here. So two times negative one. So we are going to be getting negative four over, what is that negative two? So that's positive two. And then it just happens that that X value that we have here has the same X value as the intersection point. And remember the point of intersection, actually it's, on this graph, right? So remember that that's how we can find the intersections. We set the two functions equal to each other. And so what does that mean? That just means that this point that we have here, we don't even need to bother finding the y value because the y value is already here. So the vertex, the vertex for this parabola, it's actually two, four. And so it's this point. And now I just want to point out one thing right here is that if you look at the a value here, it's because it's negative, then the parabola opens down and the vertex is right here. And then it this parabola should also go to this point, right? It should pass through this point right here. If you take advantage of the symmetry, then this point right here is two units away from, um, from x equals two. So on the other side, then you would also have another point that lies on this parabola. And so another point is right here, which is the um, x equals four and y equals zero. So now the parabola opens down, then we can actually come up with the parabola. Yeah, that looks a little bit too bad. And so now, we have the region, as you can see here, this is the bounded region. 
Yeah, so this is the region whose area that we are trying to find. Okay, so now what do we do? We can set up the integral to find a region. And so what do we do right now? The area, right? The area is actually given by what? The integral. Now, um, how do we know what limits that we got to use here? We got to actually use the left bound and the right bound for the region, which is which can be the leftmost point and the rightmost point for the region. So we actually have x equals 0, and then also... If you see this x value right here, what is this x value here? This x value is 2. And so we got to go from 0 to 2 for this region. Okay, so 0 to 2. And then now, what do we do? We are going to use the... Um, we're going to use the, the larger value subtracting the smaller value so that we can actually get... Um, we can get a positive... Uh, height because we're uh, this method of setting up the integral to find the area for a region is actually based on um, taking the limit of the Riemann sum of um, summing up the area for a lot of the rectangles right so make sure that we use the top function minus the bottom function in this region okay so which one is a top function the green function is a top function so we are going to be getting For x minus x squared. And then minus. What is the other one? The other one is going to be just the x squared. Okay, because that's the bottom function in this region. See that once you go beyond this point, this y equals x squared will be above the green region. So you got to be careful. Look at only the region, right? Don't look at the other uh, parts of the x values that are not relevant, right? So... This part right here is not relevant, but then just this part. And so, that's how we set up the integral. The rest is really just basic calculation right here, basic calculus calculation. And so I'm just gonna go faster on here. Um, we just subtract them, then we are going to get four x minus x square, minus x square, minus two x square. And then we are going to be getting the antiderivative for this function right here, right? Which would give us 2x squared minus 2 over 3 x cubed. And then 0 to 2. Okay, evaluate it from 0 to 2. So now what we are doing is that we are going to plug in the 2 in there, right? And actually, we can set it up this way first. So we plug in the, the, uh, the 2, right? And then next, we plug in the 0. And um, when you plug in the 0, that everything becomes 0. So you don't need to worry about this one right here, right? So the whole thing actually becoming 0, right? And so we calculate this one, which is what? 2 squared, which is 4 times 2 is 8, minus. Now this one, 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16, 16 over 3, right? So 16 over 3. Now if you get the common denominator of the 8 with the 16 over 3, then you're going to get 24 over 3, subtracting the 16 over 3, which will give you 8 over 3. And so that's the area for this problem, right? So that's the area for this region. And so that's that's it, right? So um, the process is that we usually find the intersections before we actually draw the region out. And when we're drawing the region, we don't need to be um, too detailed. A rough sketch would actually work. And then after we see the region, then we can see, we can tell which graph is the, uh, it's the larger function and which one is the smaller function. So we got to use the larger one subtracting the smaller one. And then what about the limit? The limits, remember that if we are integrating respect to x, then we actually need to 
um, use the leftmost point and go to the rightmost point, right? The leftmost point actually gives you the lower limit. The rightmost point will give you the upper limit. But remember their x values because we are integrating with respect to x. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave me some comments, and then also give me a like. And then also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching.